Good morning, everyone, or, or good evening, wherever you are. My name is Farhan, and this is Product Design Engineering Fundamentals. This is week one, where we're going to be talking about an introductory course, an introductory look into what product design engineering is. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we go. So this is a very good uh, quote by Steve Jobs. And I think before we even uh, talk about the entire course and what product design engineering engineers are, it's important to just think about you as an individual and kind of your purpose and you know why are you studying what you're studying and what you're doing. Um, and this is a good quote. It's the ones who are crazy enough to, to think they can change the world are the ones that do. So it is something internal and inside you. So let your strengths flourish. And if there are weaknesses, if you if you think that it's important to work on those and work on those, but at the end, consider that it's it's in your mind. If you if you can if you can actually think about it, if you can motivate yourself to do it, you you will be able to do it. So, part design engineering, it's it's a mixture of many dis disciplines: mechanical, industrial engineering, electrical engineering, and many more. And Sangeet, you're in this course with us. Software engineering can be, and it is it is actually fundamental for today to understand how software engineering also influences. Product, product design as a whole. So I was looking at this article, I was reading this article this weekend about why Apple can stage itself as such a powerful company. And that's because they've had the, this really good intersection between product, software, and, and, and like manufacturing and distribution, right? And so it's critical looking to the future, how all of these things influence work together and not separating them just because one is made out of atoms and one is made out of electrons. You, you you always have to remember that it's this holistic approach, a holistic view of the world. When you look around you on your desk, your laptop, everything is composed of all of the all of those things together. So if you can appreciate and work together, you'll be able to do great things because you understand it. So it's, yeah, and so this is important. I want you to always remember that the, there's like, the, it is a combination of this creativity and technical skills and problem solving. And you can't leave any of these out when, when you look at some of the the uh like nobel prizes or or other things that you see uh you read about there is a lot of creativity that goes and in, uh, goes into that not just oh this person's excellent at their in their in their technical field they need to be a creative think a little bit outside the box to invent that um that that thing and uh finally we need to understand that the the what the, the business aspect of it you know we can just build random things and that's really important right so think about that i mean you can build random things if, for for yourself but if you want to go out to the market or if you want to make a business out of it you need to make sure that you're building something that is useful to people so let's jump right into it what are the basic principles number 1 functionality we need to know and we need to build something that works Right. If it doesn't work, then what's the point, right? And so that's really key. Next is uh, aesthetics. It needs to be beautiful, and that's because you're going to be working with it or using it all day and every day. And so, if it's not beautiful, why why use this product at all, right? Um, usability. It has to actually work for the function that it's it's made for, right? And so, uh, and and you'll see that there's a similar theme where all of them go hand in hand. And then safety. It. It can't hurt the user. I'm sure you've heard of the Samsung uh, phones, uh, the battery swelling, right? These are really important things. You need to design things to be safe. And we'll talk a lot about that over time and what that really means. Durability, you don't want it to just break when, when you get it. And you know, many of these cheap products that you buy, you'll, you'll buy it and it, it just breaks the next day. Why do people trust one brand versus another brand? It's because they know that the materials used, the way it's designed, the way it's built is strong and solid. And increasingly important is sustainability. Are we using recycled materials? Are the materials, you know, uh, low in toxins or, or 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 like not dangerous for humans? How are you sourcing the material from the from the ground? Like there, for example, there's an in, uh, increasing scrutiny of uh, lithium and uh, cobalt batteries because they're mined from places where it's hard to source. It's hard to understand how the the people in those regions are actually mining those products and those minerals so something important to think about so what's the process to going into design um, before i jump into the section anything you want to discuss in the previous section cool 
Okay. So going into the design process. Now, this is actually a very key and fundamental part to really to really understand, but it does not need to be in this order that I'm sh sharing, but some version of this is really key. And I, I really, I'm pausing here to really stress this because to really do a good design, you need to go through these kind of um, steps and, and really think about this, whether it's a software problem, a hardware problem, electromechanical problem, a business problem, there's always a process. So don't just dive into it, write a list, make a, make a, a good list or a good process for yourself to be able to be uh, to attack it in the in the best way so let's start define the problem and this sounds like oh this is simple but no really clearly define what the problem is and this is it's very it's a big topic on its own and i think we should all sit down one by one and talk about what it means to define a problem because it's not as simple as i need to do this or this customer needs to solve this for example uh, Henry Ford, it's a, it's a famous quote, which uh, he was he said that something along the lines of, if I asked the people what they wanted, they would have said they wanted a faster horse. But at the end, he created the 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 the, the motor, uh, or the engine, sorry. And so, um, what why what's interesting here? If you go out and just look for the problem, or or ask people what the problem is, they're, they're, they'll tell you some aspect of it. They'll give you a clue into what it is but it's not going to really be the fundamental, it, it, or usually it's not the fundamental reason or the fundamental problem that they have. So you need to really think about what the problem is and clearly define it. And you'll, uh, we'll learn more about this, about defining criteria, devi defining objectives, you know, what's the difference between a criteria and objective? What is a must have? What is a nice to have? What, is a, what are the, the specs that we need to establish in our design? And that's really important. All right. Next, uh, you want to brainstorm and generate as many ideas as possible. And usually in this phase, it's really good to have other people to bounce ideas off of. And don't be shy. There are no bad ideas at, at this stage. Really, there you, 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 you want to be open and, and free at this point and really be open to other ideas as well, such that you can come to the best design and best idea, uh, best overall design possible. Okay, so it's a very important part. And it's it's important to sit down and really identify that this is the idea, ideation generation phase, because later on, there's not much room for ideas anymore. What I mean by that is, after these ideas have been established, you're going to start to combine these ideas with the criteria, the criteria that you have. At that point, generating more ideas becomes more dangerous for you because you have to, you have to solve for more problems or you have to figure out, is this idea going to break any of my other rules? And we'll talk about that in a second. So you then combine these ideas into a solution. For example, let's just say you're making a walking stick. You might want to have uh, a certain height for that walking stick, a certain material, certain weight. And then you combine, maybe you want it to be super stiff. And so all of that, you could use, for example, aluminum for that uh, cane. You could use wood for the cane. You could use carbon fiber. And, and maybe there's certain aesthetic, certain design. You need to combine all of those ideas to find a solution that fulfills all the criteria that you have in the best possible way under those circumstances. And that also includes some sort of calculation, some sort of simulation, maybe testing to figure out, okay, this is the right solution before we jump into it and start to manufacture at scale. So yeah, this the, these two parts, as I kind of said, like they kind of go hand in hand where you develop the design but you also kind of select the best solution. And this is kind of a circular iterative process. It's not just develop this design, we're done, or select the, the select a solution, we're done. No, it's you select a solution, you test it, you might do some FEA, you might do some reliability testing, and you might find that something's breaking. And so we need to go back and test a better solution or, or find really the best solution. And, and then add, eventually you come to the best solution. But it also comes to this other point, which is test and refine. So it's not easy to order these as one, two, three. Because really, it's a loop. You kind of you 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 select a design, you develop it, and then you test and refine, and then you, and you do this loop continuously until you're satisfied that you're reaching a certain threshold or certain criteria for that specific uh, product or or um, service or whatever you're building. And then finally, manufacturing. And this is, for example, here I have a manufacturing line that's physically 
producing physical products, but manufacturing could also be deploying your software online. For example, um, you know, are you deploying it on enough servers? Uh, do you have enough? Uh, can the hosting uh, accommodate all the all the kind of users that you expect at the beginning? For example, right now, ChatGPT is very popular, right? And you'll see that it often goes down and they're trying to manu quote unquote manufacture enough um, you know, bandwidth for all the people that want to access it. But right now they, they're not able to keep up with demand. Very good problem to have generally when, for something like software because usually it's not too hard to scale. But for, for physical products, you need to really carefully think what's my demand going to be projected and start to develop um, a manufacturing uh, protocol for that. Awesome. Any, uh, we went into a lot of detail there. Any questions on that section? Uh, this is very short. It's what's the, what's the role uh, of a product designer. And I, I think this is, it goes into what's also the role as an, as an engineer overall. And really you, you're, you're, you're playing a very crucial role because you're kind of juggling all hats across the board from engineering to coming up with ideas, to manufacturing, to even thinking about sustainability. A product design engineer is a wonderful uh, uh, position to have because you get to see across the board, all of these things. And we were kind of talking about this before, where sometimes if you're very, if you have a very specific uh, engineering skill, say you're a mechanical engineer, you 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 want to go deep into the design. You want to find the best solution possible in your engineering space, but you don't really uh, worry too much about uh, like kind of the the overall. Uh, you may not care about say the business uh, requirements there. You might not care about the pricing as much. I mean, a, a good engineers care about it across the board, but product engineers specifically, they need to care about it a lot more than than general other engineers. And so we can create some bullets into what are the, the high level roles and responsibilities. So developing products and concepts, designing products, working with engineers, testing. And I think the final one that we didn't really talk about is staying up to date. Uh, you should always be learning. And that's the thing, university, I think, um, I forget who, who actually had this quote, but university is actually not meant to just be the end of your education. It's meant to teach you how to learn. That's actually the most fundamental thing. Uh, education is an ongoing, ongoing process and it never, never stops. Right now, I'm helping sh share with you what I've learned, but I have to learn from other people who are more excellent than me, much, much better at me at, say, composite design or glass design or something that I have a weakness in, right? But there's also technology is always changing well you'll hear about ai um that uh, that is used in cnc machining to help predict if cutting that metal is going to fail at a certain point we know about how chat gpt as i said before it is totally changing the world right now because people are using ai in in very interesting in ways uh, right generating a you know word that that uh, written word that is Hard to uh, hard to tell that it's it's made by computers. You'll see use cases of uh, creating music and and such, right? So just make sure you stay up to date with what's going on in the world, or else you you'll fall behind and not really be able to apply what's the most cutting edge uh, at the time. Cool. So that is uh, uh, the end of it, and we'll kind of come back to another Steve Jobs quote because it's just fun to have Steve Jobs here and there. But um, yeah, it's. It's, a, it's kind of a good uh, wrap up to everything we've talked about, which is design is not just what it looks like and feels like, it's how it works. And it's not about just creating a beautiful looking product, whether it's a beautiful looking app or beautiful um, looking piece of hardware. It, it What matters is how it works as well. Like well, what's the purpose? What, what problem are you solving? So yeah, so think about that as you go into this uh, journey of yours in product design. And um, and even in your education in engineering and and across uh, across the board, where this also applies to all aspects of life, where think about why you're doing that, why you're solving that problem, and and then also on top of that, add that aesthetic, add that uh, user experience to it as well. Cool. So any uh, questions there? That was the end of uh, the, this uh, set of slides. Um, yeah, I do have a question. So you kind of talked about how uh, integrated product designers are with all the engineers in the industry. I guess my question was just what differentiates a product designer from an industrial designer, like in engineering terms? 
That's a that's a good question. I mean, you can even further ask what what's the difference between a mechanical engineer, right, uh, and, and a product designer. That's actually the most common question that I get. Uh, but essentially, a product designer, an industrial designer, what they're doing is they're trying to create a product that can be mass manufactured and and scaled in a big big way. They're experts at that. And this is generally, right? Some their specializations and such. Whereas product designers, although they have the skills and knowledge of of the know how how to do that, they're not the experts of mass mass producing things. They they know how to they they know how to do it, but it's more about finding the people that know how to do it and talking their language so that they can design uh, the processes that can enable that. That does that help answer your question? Yeah. Anything else? So I'll stop sharing my screen there and um, I'll stop the recording in just a moment, but um, uh, uh, just waiting for any more questions. Uh, Cause remember, this is your time. If you don't feel like there's any dumb questions or anything. And uh, cause if you, I want it to be that it's, it's an open discussion with all of us. <laughs> 